But today is a very chilly March 6th. It's about 29 degrees. It's supposed to raise pretty high today. It's supposed to get close to 60. I am the first one at the upper claim this year, and boy has it changed. We had a pretty good flood down through here first part of this week. Looks like everybody's dredge holes from last summer is completely filled in. like possibly a lot of good material washed down through here. Yeah, everything's filled back in. Water's up a little bit right now, but I'm standing in probably about 18 inches of water. Dennis Dayton and uh, the Biffles worked right in here. That trench they had is filled. A lot of big rock exposed. Remnants of a tailings pile. There's some bedrock. Yeah, last year I don't remember this much large rock exposed down through here. It's like possibly the remnants of... Yeah, I remember that hillings pile because I was digging right here at the end of uh, last fall. A lot of gravel. Not a lot of sand. Well, that's a pretty deep hole. Well, I was going to work the edge of this bedrock today. Not so sure I'm going to or not. Water's moving a little fast down through here where I was digging last year. Uh, have to see what I can do. My uh, boys aren't with me today. Uh, my oldest is stuck at the house, not allowed to leave. He ended up with whooping cough. It's going around pretty bad at their school. So, he's hating life right now, being quarantined to the house. Well, that flood exposed a lot more bedrock down this side. It was nothing but mud and sand. But, I told, uh, told Dakota I'd run him a little bit of material. Throw uh, that little bazooka gold trap take it home to him so he, he can play around with it in the garage that way he can still add a little bit hopefully to his uh, gold take for the year but I'll get back with you guys here after a bit I finally got set up I did a lot of test painting up and down this side Started at the exposed bedrock down there that uh, a lot of people worked last year. All the way down this side, all the way to the top edge of the riffle there, the drop in the creek. 
Now I did run my son's little bazooka gold trap over there at the leading edge of that gravel bar to give him a little bit of material to play with when I go home. And uh, I probably run 30 shovelfuls, cleaned it out about three times. I checked the first, after about seven, eight shovelfuls, and there was probably about 15, 20 collars in there. Nothing real big, but I don't know what's in the last two times, the last couple times I cleaned it out. That's a, it'll be a surprise to both of us. But uh, that flood we had this week, the water come clear up out of the banks down here. But all last year, you had the exposed bedrock down there, and this section here that's pushed up, and that was the last of the bedrock that you could visually see. Well, it's exposed it all down through here now, and I'm not that far away from uh, the ripple. So I'd say any of this area where that bedrock drops off would be great. Now there's a lot of small cobble in here now compared to last year covering up all the hard pack. But a lot of the creek that the actual hard pack is completely exposed now. All the big rock that we was uh, working around and trying to move. completely exposed. Here's some of that hard pack. I tried to pan some out around some of these big rocks. I wasn't getting hurt really any black sand. I did do a test over here. Got some black sand. Found one real nice pepper flake. probably almost an eighth inch across but that was all I found and it, it, like I said it was just really no black sand with it yeah this is all washed out the only thing that was exposed was the top of this we had a lot of mud dark colored mud and tan sand now the tan sand's pushed clear up to there I'm going to attempt to kind of dig out some of this area here just outside of that bedrock. As I said, it's going to be some hard moving. But we'll see if we can find anything. I just mainly wanted to check things out, kind of give everybody an update since I'm the first one here since it's open. Kind of let everybody see what it looked like this year so far. It's so early. We could always get some more floods to change everything around again. But right now, a lot of the overburdens washed off. But, well, I'm going to get at it. I've messed around a while. I've only got about another hour and a half to two hours, and I want to be on the road heading home. So, I'll get back with you later. Kind of hard to get any good footage today. Messing around with these big rocks. Can't really uh, shovel one handed. I was able to pull that big boulder up off the edge of this bedrock here. And I'm finding some happy decent material right down the front face. Right where the bedrock drops off. Tried shoveling around there, move some big rocks. It's probably about 15 inches deep to get to the bottom. And I've got water over top of my right glove, soaked my cotton glove underneath it. But I'm 
might uh, do a little clean up here in a minute. I'm going to do a few more shovel pulls out of this hole. Kind of see if I'm finding anything. And uh, we'll go from there. If I'm not finding anything here, then uh, I might move over to the gravel bar. I'm not going to be here too long. I don't want to haul anything too far away from the truck. Definitely ready for warmer temperatures and warmer water. Got a little bit of clay mixed in with it. It's not solid. There's definitely some decomposing bedrock. Yeah, I'm right up against the bedrock. I'm thinking about ordering uh, a full length section of the gold stock matting, which is pretty much vortex. If anybody runs an MS 46, it, uh, don't use the carpet, just uses the vortex matting. I'd like a little bit of input on that. So far, I haven't really seen a whole lot that I'm losing, but I'd kind of like to know if it's worth it or not. Dark colored material. Last year I was here, the guy found a uh, half of a beautiful hot water geo. Crystal clear, big tall crystals. I'd like to find another half of it. All the ones we found in here so far has all been. Uh, Cold water and yellow. Not real clear. Well, I'm going to let you off here so I can have my other hand back and I'll get back to the air in a bit. Well, somehow I took off this morning and forgot my snuffer bottle. So I'm going to throw everything off into a five gallon bucket off to do a final take clean up when I get home but 30 minutes of running I washed a bunch of fines down this is just out of my upper mat I think I'm going to stay right in the spot that I'm in Nice flake. Yep. A lot of pyrite in there too, some really big garnets. Well, I'm gonna clean out the rest of the box. 
Yeah, the only complaint that I have with the Martin Sluice is the lockdowns for the riffles. Them suckers are tight. I take the height off of at least one knuckle every time I'm down here. But, uh, alright, I'm going to finish cleaning out the box, see what's in the lower part. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. But all I've done... Shovel, I'm up to my crotch, but that's only probably about maybe 24 inches across, and I haven't moved much material. My tailing file, that's the smallest one I've had since I was running a build pump pipe anchor that I built, but it's only 7 inches wide. Dakotas. There wasn't as much in there as I thought there was. I found probably about a dozen itty bitty specks. Well, one little pepper piece. The hole I worked next to the bedrock, I worked about an hour and a half total. By far, my largest gold take this year. That's some nice Ohio flakes. Not bad for an hour and a half. I only dug about two inches across, or two inches, two feet across. But I went straight down that front face of that bedrock until I hit bedrock again. I'm definitely pleased. If I had a penny or something, I'd lay it down in there, but I don't. I'll be the next time.